In this video presentation, we will see about the bacterial endospore. In that, we will discuss about their properties, then the formation of endospore, its structure, and then about its staining technique. Some gram positive bacteria, like the bacillus, which is aerobic bacteria, and the clostridium, which is anaerobic bacteria. During adverse environmental condition, or during nutrition depletion, this bacteria will produce the endospore, that is, the spore within the bacterial cell. This endospore is a multi layered structure which protects the genetic material inside the core. The endospores are highly resistant dormant structures. They remain dormant for the extended period, even centuries. They have no metabolism and no metabolic activity. So, they do not have role in the reproduction. The process of the endospore formation in the bacteria is referred as the sporulation. The endospores are highly resistant to the heat, the dehydration, the UV radiations, and the chemicals. The resistance of the spore is mediated by a chemical called the calcium dipicolinic acid, which is found only in the spores. During adverse environmental condition, the bacteria forms the endospore, that is, the spore within the bacterial cell. The process by which the endospore formed in the bacteria is referred as the sporulation. Later, the mature endospore is released from the vegetative cell to become the free spore. When the favorable condition returns, the spore germinate to form the vegetative cell back. The process by which the endospore revert back to the vegetative cell is called the germination. So, the spore relation helps in the survival of the bacteria during adverse environmental condition. The revival of the dormant spore into the vegetative cell is called the germination. It happens by three stages the activation, the germination, and the outgrowth. First, the activation stage. Here, the spore get activated by heating at 60 degrees Celsius for an hour or by lowering the pH. No morphological changes happens in this stage. Second, the germination stage. Once the activated spore is exposed to the substances like the amino acids and the sugars, the germination starts, that is, the metabolism starts. Lastly, the outgrowth. Here, the swelling takes place due to the excessive water intake, which is followed by the DNA synthesis. Now, we will see about the structure of the endospore. The mature endospore is a multi layered and a complex structure. The innermost part is called as the core. The core contains the nucleoid, that is, the bacterial DNA, then the cytoplasm, the ribosomes, and then importantly, the calcium dipicolinic acid, and the enzymes. This core is surrounded by the inner membrane, or the plasma membrane. This, in turn, is surrounded by the germ cell wall, which is rich in the peptidoglycan. Then, the modified peptidoglycan layer, called the cortex, which surrounds the germ cell wall. The cortex is surrounded by the outer membrane. This is, again, surrounded by the inner spore coat, and, the outer, spore coat. Together, it is, termed as, the spore coat, which is, rich in, the keratin-like protein. Once, this protein coat, is formed, over the cortex, the spores gets, matured. Some spores, form, an additional layer, called, the exosporium. So, this endospore, is, a multi-layered structure, which protects, the genetic material, inside the core. Among this, the calcium dipicolinic acid, inside the core, and, the keratin-rich spore coat, are the important constituents, that plays, a major role, for the resistance of, the bacterial spore. So, during, the adverse, environmental condition, or, nutrition depletion, some bacteria, will, produce, the endospore, that is, the spore, 
within the bacterial cell. The process of the endospore formation in the bacteria is referred as the sporulation. The spore formation is divided into five stages. At normal environmental condition, with nutrient availability, the spore forming bacteria divides by the binary fission. But when the environmental condition get adverse or the nutrient get depleted, the endospore formation gets initiated. In stage 1, the DNA of the bacterial cell condenses and assembles into an axial filament. Now, they are called as the mother cell. In stage 2, the DNA divides into two copies. Then, the mother cell membrane invaginates to form the four spores. In stage 3, the mother cell membrane continues to grow and engulf the developing spore. Now, the developing spore is surrounded by the two membrane layers. In stage 4, the peptidoglycan laid between the two membrane of the developing spore to form the spore cortex. The calcium dipicolinic acid is formed inside the developing spore, where the calcium enters from the out, and in exchange, it loses the water. Once the protein coat is formed, over the cortex, the spores get matured. Some spores form an additional layer called the exosporium. In stage 5, with the help of the lytic enzyme, the mature spore release from the mother cell. Next, the special staining. The special staining like the Schaefer and Fulton staining technique helps to determine or to demonstrate the endospore of the bacteria under the microscopic examination. By this staining technique, here the endospores are stained green and the vegetative portion of the bacteria are stained pink. By this staining technique, we can identify the different types of the bacterial endospore. The shape and the position of the spores varies in different species. This is useful for classification and identification purposes by identifying their shape and the position. If the position and the shape is the central oval bulging spore. The example is the Clostridium edimantins. Next, the subterminal oval bulging spore. The example is the Clostridium chawi. Next, the terminal oval bulging spore. It gives the appearance of the tennis racket. The example is the Clostridium tertium. Next, the terminal spherical bulging spore. It gives the appearance of the drumstick. The example is the Clostridium tetany. And lastly, the central spherical non-bulging spore. The example is the bacillus anthracis, the causative agent of the anthrax. So, by Schaefer and Fulton staining technique, we can stain and identify different types of the bacterial endospore. Coming to the principle behind the spore staining technique. It is done by the Schaefer and Fulton staining technique. It is also sometimes called as the modified Zeal Nielsen's technique. That is, it is a modified version of the Zeal Nielsen's acid fast staining method. We will discuss their coloring property of the non-spore forming bacteria and the spore producing bacteria in parallel to each other. Once the bacteria are treated with the 5% aqueous malachite green staining solution, which is the primary stain used here, along with the heat treatment, it gives green color to both the bacteria, but only the spore portion of the spore forming bacteria fixes the primary stain. Next, after heating, wash the smear with the distilled water. It decolorizes the primary stain easily from the non spore forming bacteria. But the spore portion of the spore forming bacteria 
retains the primary stain. Lastly, on use of the counter stain, the dilute carbyl fuchsin that gives pink color to the non spore forming bacteria and to the vegetative portion of the spore producing bacteria. So, on spore staining, the endospores are stained green and the vegetative portion of the spore forming bacteria are stained pink. With this, we are coming to the end of the bacterial endospores. In next video presentation, we will see about the practical demonstration on the spore staining technique and their microscopic examination. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.